What's up everyone, Dubblade here with a patch information video for Anthem. This is regarding patch 1.05, also known as patch 1.0.3 for some systems. The patch was released on the 9th of March 2019 and was approximately between 4 and 5 gigabytes, at least on PlayStation 4. I'm assuming it's slightly more or less if you're using a different system. Now this patch fixes and changes numerous issues that Anthem has and they are sorely needed unfortunately. These improvements include changes to certain strongholds, fixes to certain creatures in the world, changes to damage and item scaling, tweaks to items and especially masked work items, and more miscellaneous gameplay bugs. Now whilst this patch is indeed a big one, Bioware have also acknowledged that there are still many other problems that need fixing with Anthem, but these will be addressed in subsequent updates and patches to the game. So we'll be keeping an eye on these as things progress. So anyway, let's get into the heart of the video and talk about what actually has been changed, fixed or adjusted with Anthem. First came the high level fixes and changes as Bioware have put it. These include respawn restrictions being completely removed altogether. Instead players have a respawn timer now that is based on the activity a player is in. For example, doing critical path, agent missions and such, players will have a 10 second respawn timer. Strongholds, legendary contracts and other endgame activities will now have a 30 second respawn timer instead. Free play at the current time doesn't have any changes in terms of respawn timers. Of course you can still resurrect your friends if you want to but this change was probably implemented as a lot of players, especially the ones I came across, were very well slow or even reluctant to actually resurrect their allies. Next are loot changes. Common and uncommon items, so white and green drops, will no longer appear once a player is level 30. So hopefully this means players will get more epic, masterwork and legendary items once they've hit the max level. Next, they've improved stability for all platforms. This includes a number of fixes that were causing crashes and connection problems with Anthem. And then finally for the high level fixes, they've made audio improvements, fixing a number of issues that could cause audio to drop out completely. So a few nice quality of life changes there. But next, moving on to general fixes and improvements. Now, this is quite a long list here, but bear with me as we go through these. First, they fixed a number of issues that were blocking players from accessing the forge. Next, all missions should now properly end when all conditions have been met. The inbox will now properly display information on PC. The inbox, if you're not sure, is found in the newsfeed. They also fixed an issue that would cause players to be unable to interact with NPCs in Fort Tarsis. Next, they've changed it so the vault is no longer accessible from the forge. This change was made to improve performance of the game. They also fixed an issue that would cause the game to hang when entering the menus whilst on expedition. Next, the changes to the titans. These will no longer respawn on missions after they are defeated. For example, if a player defeats two out of the three titans and wipes, the first two will not respawn when the players respawn. This should make things easier when facing these foes. Next, the server shutdown message, which for me personally normally appears in free play, should now appear less frequent. Before it was appearing every minute, now hopefully it's going to be a lot less. Next, the ability to quick play into a stronghold has been added back to the game, which should make quick play a little bit more interesting. Next, for mouse users, the mouse button 4 is no longer bound to the back button for PC players. They've also addressed crashes that occur when selecting certain conversation options when interacting with NPCs. I personally experienced this with the vanity vendor who often crashed the game when I started talking about his fear of heights. Next, players should no longer get stuck at the end of the Tomb of the General Tarsus mission. The next fix was to a issue that occurred during quick play missions, so hopefully you should no longer be spawning into bugged missions. Bioware have also stated that there'll be additional improvements to quick play with future patches as well. Next players should no longer get stuck behind fog walls on missions or in strongholds as often. It still may occur a little bit, but hopefully it'll be a lot less than it has been. Often I found these occurred when players started rushing ahead, skipping mobs, so on and so forth. The next change is that players should now receive credits for the There Be Giants challenge when they are downed and while the event is actually active. Derby Giants is a little bit of a world event where four giants spawn in free play. Next, they've improved audio issues when defeating certain creatures so it will provide better feedback. They've changed the wording for server shutdown messages 
to better indicate that it is just the player's server shutting down, not the entire game's server. Players may now also launch an expedition from anywhere at Fort Tarsis. You don't actually have to go all the way back to your javelin anymore. You can just press and hold the button as you could when you were in a group. So for example on the PlayStation, it's a case of just holding down triangle and it will instantly take you to the expedition screen. Next, with the PlayStation 4 LED lights, the colours will now change based on the javelin being used. I remember theorising about it during a stream, but I was proven wrong, but now it looks like that it's true again. So I assume it will be yellow or orange for the Ranger, blue for the Storm, red for the Colossus, and green for the Interceptor. But next, it should now be harder for players to get stun locked by certain enemy compositions. Also, the values on max flight time inscriptions have been increased. The appearance of the N7 vinyl on the Legion of Dawn armor sets has been improved. Haluk now properly faces the player's direction during certain dialogue scenes. And finally, the message, open the cortex to track the Legionnaire's challenge, will no longer... Sorry. <laughs> As you can tell, um, Mischief has often experienced this. Basically, uh, during the mission, during free play and that, it will often tell you to open the cortex to track the Legionnaire's challenge. This will pop up time and time again in the space of about... 30 seconds or so every single time. This has now been fixed and it shouldn't no longer pop up as often. Anyway, next moving on to strongholds. They fixed an issue that would cause players to get stuck in the entrance to the sewers in the Temple of the Scar stronghold. This is the only change during this patch that has been made to specific strongholds. But next moving on to changes to creatures. Well, first with the Titans. Titans have been balanced, and this is to all variations of the Titans. They've reduced the overall damage mitigation from 100% to between 70 and 75, depending on the damage type. They've increased the time that weak points are exposed on Titans. They fixed an issue that prevented the effects from applying and thus preventing combos. So you can now freeze, electrocute, apply acid, so on and so forth to Titans and thus create combos. Ranger combos are definitely going to be useful against Titans now. They've also increased the damage their Titans take from hitting weak points. The lesser Titans' weak points have been changed to always be active. They've improved the collision on the rings and seeking projectile attacks that hopefully should make them easier to dodge for players. They've also decreased the radius of the seeking projectile's attack and decreased the damage done by the self-destruct ability of the Titans. So overall the Titans have been completely nerfed and they shouldn't be a challenge anymore. Whilst I didn't think they were that difficult, they were very bullet spongy. Anyway, next moving on to the frozen scar enforcers and scrappers. They can no longer move or attack whilst they are actually frozen. Next, the monitor's boss health has been greatly reduced in the Heart of Rage stronghold. And when it comes to abilities that are classed as force, players will be less likely to be repeatedly staggered by heavy attacks and lastly they've adjusted the force applied by some creatures attacks down which will lower the frequency of players being staggered overall. So lots of changes there to the creatures in the world of Anthem. Now we're moving on to damage and item scaling changes. First they've adjusted the damage scaling of secondary damage sources. These now scale with the average item power. This will allow these damage sources to better scale in the Grand Master difficulties. This will increase the scaling of melee damage, combo damage, ultimate damage, status effects and item procs. Also item power scaling has been changed to better reflect the actual power of the item based on its rarity. This is applied to all items retrospectively and players should see the power of their items go up. Hopefully these changes will make some enemies feel a little bit less bullet spongy. Anyway, next moving on to gameplay bug fixes. First, the ultimate bar will no longer appear full at the start of a mission when it isn't actually already full. As you can see, this is a bug that has caused a few deaths, especially when we first started playing Anthem. Next, weapon recall will now stop once an exo is looking straight up. They also fixed a number of animation issues that could occur when the Colossus was using its shield. It also should be no longer possible for the Interceptor to become frozen while starting up their ultimate ability. Also with the Interceptor as well, the aura damage will now deal the correct damage type based on the active aura, so ice, acid, so on and so forth. 
players can also no longer equip abilities from one javelin to another. Next, the Colossus can now use gear faster after being attacked by a heavy hit from an enemy. Also with the Colossus, the javelin can now shield charge through destructible objects such as explosive canisters or harvest nodes, which is a welcome change. And finally, again with the Colossus, the exosuit can now recover faster after crashing into walls. So that's about it for the general bug fixes in regards to gameplay. However, Bioware have continued to make changes to item balance. So they've increased the base health of the wind wall and bulwark point to provide better scaling on higher difficulties. The duration of these has been reduced to 20 seconds as well, down from 60 seconds, making them a lot more viable as a defensive ability. Next, the burst mortar's damage has been increased to 300 up from 145 and its cooldown has been reduced to 6 seconds down from 10 seconds and its description has also been changed and fixed. The flat cannon for the Colossus, the damage has been increased from 42 up from 30. Also with the Colossus's battle cry, the description has now been updated to explain that it also reduces the resistances of affected enemies. And finally with the interceptor's wraith strike, the damage has been increased from 250 up from 200 and it will now apply an elemental effect on the target based on the interceptor's active aura. It's going to be interesting to see if this effect now actually primes targets, but they haven't actually stated that it does. But moving away from the item balance updates to item bug fixes. First, the wind wall should no longer block or interfere with other players' abilities. The ranger's grenadier components will now correctly lower the cooldown of grenade abilities. They also fixed an issue where certain weapons were not firing where the crosshairs were aimed and the ice blast ability of the storm javelin now has the proper primer icon displayed. So a few item fixes there. Next, moving on to inscription bugs. First, the thrust of delay recovery inscription is now correctly applying the bonus. The overheat delay recovery inscription now correctly applies the correct bonus. And lastly, the weapon reload bonus inscription is now correctly applying the bonus. Anyway, moving on to the final section of this patch, which is masterwork item balance updates as well as masterwork item bug fixes. First with the balance updates, they've increased the damage of the following masterwork weapons. They should be displayed on screen now. Basically it's a buff across the whole board of weapons, making masterwork weapons a lot more viable. But as for the masterwork item bug fixes, Rauner's Blaze, it will no longer roll with incorrect inscriptions on it. Ablative Shielding now provides the proper boost in shields and armor. The badge of devastation will now generate more ultimate charge when triggered and it should no longer be possible to stack the effects of Gunslinger's Mark more than once. So that's about it for this patch. Obviously, as you can tell, there have been a lot of changes here. And in some respect, this also shows that maybe Anthem wasn't really ready for release when it did launch. Whilst this patch does not fix some of the major issues that Anthem has, it's at least a little bit of a start and hopefully a step in the right direction. We'll have to see when future patches are released to how this all pans out and if it is enough to bring players back. Personally, I would have liked to have seen something regarding the crashes on PlayStation 4, although it could be implied under the performance changes to the game. I would have also liked to have seen improvements to the UI and the user friendliness of some aspects of the game. For example, the consumables you can craft before mission. It would have been nice to craft multiple versions of the same one rather than one at a time, but maybe these are coming in future updates. We'll have to wait and see. But what are your thoughts on the patch? Leave a comment down below. And until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you a patch information video regarding patch 1.05 for Anthem. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like for more.